case is linked to an existing cluster in Lakemba, which is positive. However, we have had a couple of cases overnight, which Dr Chant will talk about. So we are asking people during the day to monitor the New South Wales Health website and make sure, uh, in particular, uh, that they are uh, in touch with all those organisations or all those venues uh, which infected persons have been to, and that's really, really critical. I also uh, want to say that, pleasingly today, there'll be three flights from New Zealand coming to New South Wales without those citizens having to go into hotel quarantine. So as far as the trans-Tasman bubble is concerned, we're certainly starting that process from our end. We appreciate that when those travellers go back to New Zealand, they may have uh, quarantine to do there, but it's a positive move, and I want to thank Dr Chan and the health experts for giving us those strict requirements to allow us to safely bring people in from New Zealand. Now, this is great news for tourism. It's also great news for family reunification and also great news for businesses. And uh, Minister Hazard will provide a bit further detail on the regimen or the uh, detail we have around those arrangements to give everybody confidence that this is a safe thing to do and the right thing to do. I also wanted to remind the community that from today, for outdoor venues in New South Wales, the two square metre rule applies, which means that uh, instead of having four square metre rules applying, uh, residents or people attending hospitality venues uh, are able to um, enjoy uh, more people outdoors and for businesses and jobs, it is extremely positive. But the key thing, and, uh, and some of my colleagues will be emphasising this further or later in the day, the key thing is to make sure that you are only allowed to go to the two square metre rule outdoors if you have a QR code. So we're saying to all businesses, if you either have your own electronic QR code or the Service New South Wales one, you will be able to have that restriction eased. Uh, in addition, we're also pleased that outdoor musical performances will also have increased number of people in uh, participating in those events, whether they're the, the participants, the, the players, but also uh, people watching those performances, which is great news for the art sector. And, and I know so many people who are performers have suffered for months and months. Some have not worked for seven months, in fact. Um, and for them, it's a huge relief to be able to now uh, do what they do best, but also um, reinstate those jobs that unfortunately were put on hold during that time. Uh, I also want to foreshadow that if Dr Chant is happy with the number of cases we have over the weekend, uh, we are and want to announce further easing of restrictions next week but that will depend on how the case numbers go in the next few days. We did hold off on those. We were hoping to make some announcements yesterday and today, but we have held off on those uh, given uh, the, the number of community transmissions we've had this week. So I'll now ask Dr Chant to provide a detailed um, outline of, of the status of those cases that came in since 8 o'clock last night, uh, and then Minister Hazard will elaborate on the arrangements we have in relation to those quarantine provisions for New Zealanders. And we welcome New Zealanders. We welcome the Kiwis to our shores. It is a first important step in bringing back international travel and we hope that uh, Prime Minister Ardern returns the favour in the near future. So Dr Chan. Thank you. So as the Premier indicated there were five new cases to 8pm last night. Four of those were overseas acquired in hotel quarantine and one was locally acquired and was linked to a known case or cluster. The one new locally acquired case is a household contact of a previously reported case linked to the Lakemba cluster. Overnight, we have had some cases coming in and we'll update you if there's anything relevant from a public health perspective. We have had um, some additional cases linked to the Great Beginnings Child Care Centre at Oran Park and we will be contacting and recontacting families and staff at that child care centre and provide um, additional advice. But I would ask anyone who is at that child care centre to immediately isolate. A number of people would have been advised to isolate, but we may be upgrading the advice for some of the casual contacts at that child care centre, but public health will be reaching out to you immediately this morning. Also, um, people that have attended the A to Z Medical Clinic in Lakemba um, between the 25th of September to the 2nd, sorry, 25th of, of September to the 2nd of October. Um, we're requesting that you go forth and get tested. It is greater than 14 days since you were there, but please, um, we are suggesting you to get tested. And anyone who was attended between the 3rd to the 10th of October, we're asking you to te get tested isolate and remain in isolation, monitor for symptoms, get retested if any symptoms develop 14 days since you were last at that centre. 
And I just do want to acknowledge the local community and the response we've had around the testing uh, request in that area. Thank you very much. Also, um, as I've indicated, we have been expanding the state's sewerage surveillance system. And uh, we have had a detection in the treatment plant at Quakers Hill on the 13th of October. The plant serves Sydney's west and northwest, which includes some areas where there's recent cases. So that may be the explanation. But for the utmost caution, we are asking people in that area to come forward and get tested if they have any symptoms. Now that advice about getting tested for um, symptoms applies across New South Wales, but we think that this additional information should continue to urge people in that area to um, come forward for testing. Also, there's some venues that are in Bargo and um, Campbelltown and Norellan Town Centre. The, these venues have been identified by what's called the upstream contact tracing, and that's why they are from a while ago. So through that upstream, we've identified other cases who were potentially infectious at particular points in time. So the 14 days has passed for many of these sites, but we have got specific advice in relation to these venues. So in terms of the Bargo Hotel on the Great Southern Road Bargo, if you were there on the 26th of September 2020, between 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Patrons or staff who were there for an hour or more during this time are considered close contacts and must get tested regardless of symptoms. And patrons or staff who were there for less than one hour during this time are considered casual contacts and must be tested if they had any symptoms at all. Spotlight Plaza, 147 Queen Street, Campbelltown, including the Spotlight store, Gloria Jeans, on September the 26th between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Patrons or staff who were there for less than one hour during this time are considered casual contacts and must be tested should they have any had any symptoms at all. And Norellan Town Centre on the 26th of September between 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Patrons or staff who were there for less than one hour during this time are considered casual contacts and must be tested should they have any symptoms at all. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Uh, well, today is a great day. We're having the first flights in from New Zealand. Um, obviously, the New South Wales government has spent uh, many, many months uh, working through what they could do and what they couldn't do, but the New South Wales government has been keen to open up our economy at the same time as we're keeping people safe. Um, we have worked extensively with the federal government, uh, as would be required, because these are international flights. And as a result of the uh, work of the state government and the federal government, the Australian government, uh, there will be very clear delineation of uh, the, t the categories of people who can come into our state. Uh, again, striking the balance between uh, tourism, the economy and keeping our local community safe. Um, as a result of those discussions with the federal government and the New Zealand government, uh, people coming in, tourists coming in or visitors from New Zealand will have to have been in New Zealand for at least 14 days. And when they arrive at the airport, they will have to complete a declaration. Uh, which indicates their state of health, uh, and they effectively will be screened at that end. When they arrive here in uh, New South Wales at the International Airport, again, they're under the control of the federal government, under the Border Force uh, requirements, but it'll be very, very clear that they will be kept separate from any other international travellers arriving from across the world. Clearly, we have uh, very strict rules on most international travellers, all except New Zealand. Uh, and those strict rules require that anybody coming in from overseas will go into hotel quarantine for 14 days. Uh, the New Zealand travellers, provided they have been in New Zealand for 14 days, provided they don't have symptoms, provided they uh, complete their, uh, their declaration and provided they uh, satisfy our health requirements at this end when they arrive, will be able to come straight out into our community and of course enjoy catching up with their family and friends and uh, doing the business that we hope they'll do here in New South Wales. It's another confirmation that uh, New South Wales is actually the gateway to the rest of uh, the country, the rest of Australia, and we welcome our Kiwi uh, friends coming in, but we're also doing it in a very COVID safe way. Again, thanks to the Commonwealth for the work they've done with Border Force, thanks for the work Border Force and Sydney Airport have done. I spoke personally to uh, the General Manager of Sydney Airport a few days ago to make sure that as people enter in through the airport, 
there will be different channels, different uh, ways in of those, uh, of those New Zealand travellers from the other travellers. And in fact, we'll also be keeping them separate from people coming from Victoria for the time being uh, until Victoria uh, does settle down its COVID situation. So it's a great win for New South Wales and I'm sure it's a great win for New Zealand. Can we stick with the COVID for a start we'll rather than rushing off on other things, please? We just need to Maybe Dr. Mayor, you missed the chance. So you mentioned <coughs> cases at great beginnings overnight and hmm. agents that weren't included in the count. Can you say how many cases there have been post at the end and at great beginnings? Are we talking about children hmm. who have the virus? We are, but I'll let Dr. Chant do the, the expected one. Yeah. So just in relation to the um, child care centre, we've had a child and a staff member at that child care centre. Now, remember, we had already alerted you to that um, child care centre. People were on standby. But when we get another case at the child care centre, it always is um, a time where we reflect on whether other other um, people that may have been in contact, should people be upgraded from casual to close contacts. This is part of our routine. I do thank the um, staff and the families at that child care centre, but we will be reaching out and having further discussions following these two cases overnight. In terms of the um, Lakemba um, GP practice, my comments were more to reinforce to anyone um, that those are the requirements in case anyone was attending that um, that clinic and hadn't been already contacted by New South Wales Health. So was it two new cases post-APM? No, I haven't said there's any cases associated with it. My advice was no, more... So not, not Lakemba, but, but, but the child care centre, two yeah. cases, yes. Premier, this evidence, uh, uh, repeat again at ICAC this morning, this conversation with Darren McGuire, you say, William tells me, we, he says, William tells me we've done our deal, so hopefully that's about half of all that gone, referring to his $1.5 million debt, and you say, I don't need to know about that bit. Why did you say, I don't need to know about that bit, Premier? Oh, Mr Quinnell, I answered those questions during six hours of public evidence on Monday, so I refer you to that. Daniel McGuire did say to you, I think that there was information that you didn't want to know about. What was that information in relation uh, to his activities? Again, I, please, I, I spent six hours um, being very open and transparent, uh, and I refer you to those comments so there. Why, why weren't you open and transparent? I'm sorry? The phone taps do show that Mr McGuire told you that he stands to make $1.5 million from a deal at Badger's Clip that would clear his debt. He also said that he took... Louise Waterhouse to your office to try and sort out a problem with her land across the road from Badgerys Creek. Can you hand on hard right now say you didn't know what he was up to? Uh, firstly, one of the facts in your question is actually incorrect, but in any event, um, hand on heart... Which one? Uh, hand on Which heart... Which one's incorrect, Premier? Uh, excuse me. Hand on heart, I have done nothing wrong, and I refer everybody to my evidence on Monday, and I also say this. Uh, Mr Maguire was in Parliament for nearly 20 years. Many of us trusted him, and many of us have been let down by him. In 2018, in 2000, I'm sorry? The new evidence in case come forward today, so it's, it's separate to what you said on Monday. He said there was information that you didn't want to know about in relation to his activities. What was that information you didn't want to know about? Well, again, I refer you to my evidence on Monday. I'm not aware of what's happened this morning, but I say this. Um, uh, I've been supportive uh, as a witness to the proceedings and I'll continue to do so. I've been extremely open and transparent. Uh, I've done nothing wrong. I haven't been accused of doing anything wrong. And I just ask everybody to respect the process, let the ICAC do their job and let them make sure that they get a thorough, uh, a thorough hearing uh, of all the evidence today. So did you, did you actively limit the amount of information that you knew about Darren Maguire's business dealings? I've already made that very clear and absolutely not. I'm sorry? Because I don't need to know about that setting boredom or disinterest or to shield yourself from private activities. I actually um, made uh, comments in relation to that during my, pu my public evidence and I ask you to refer to those comments because they were very open and transparent, very honest, and I just ask you to refer to those. In 2018, he left Parliament because of corruption allegations. Why did you not go down to ICAC then or have your lawyer write to ICAC and say, I've been with this man and I'm aware of his land deals. You are the Premier after all. Uh, can I just say this, that I have been um, absolutely uh, overly cooperative with ICAC uh, from the outset. And I will, I will, I will, all I will say is this, you cannot disclose uh, many of the proceedings that happen behind uh, closed doors, but I will say this, that I've been overly cooperative. Did you speak to them in 2018? 
Did you speak to them on Twitter? Again, I've said this, that it's important to respect the processes. And can I say this? It's really, really important because if you breach any of the processes, um, it, is, it is not a good thing. Oh, yeah. Did you go by the testimony that you gave on Monday that your relationship started in 2015? What I will say is um, whatever I've said openly and transparently uh, is in the evidence on Monday. Uh, Premier, how concerned are you that the ICAC released uh, transcripts and tapes uh, yeah. Your, your personal details, yes, yeah. It, um, suffice to say, it hasn't been pleasant, and unfortunately, it didn't happen once but twice. And um, I accepted their apology this you morning. You accept the telephone number concern is now disconnected, so no one can contact you on it. Uh, I, I don't want to comment on Premier, that. Premier, did Daryl McGuire at any stage tell you that the lobbying he was doing for the Louise Waterhouse that he was seeking to make a call? Oh, look, I've already made comment about that, and, ex and uh, so is Miss Waterhouse. And I just ask you to refer to what's on the public record already. I said perhaps yes, he, he might have told well, I, I say please refer to the public record. In, in 2018, yesterday, you challenged the opposition leader to repeat her questions outside. Um, Jodie McKay has done that. Will you take legal action against the opposition leader? Oh, look, I'm, I'm just focused on doing my job for New South Wales. And can I say this? Um, I appreciate, I appreciate uh, what happened on Monday was... Um, uh, was shocking for people. Uh, I was very honest, very upfront, but my focus remains uh, on the people of the state, and that's where my focus remains. In 2018, you went eight times to the Wagga Wagga by-election campaign. On any of those occasions, did you see Darren McGuire? How many? <sighs> I have always conducted my official business officially, and I've made that distinction very clear. Private is private. So you did. Uh, very confident. These actions that you've undertaken, saying, I don't need to know that bit, stay away from me, these conversations on the tapes, and the fact you only ended the relationship with Daryl Maguire once you'd been to a private hearing by ICAC, they indicate that you're a leader who's not about right or wrong, but whether or not she'll be caught. Oh, I'm sorry, but I strongly refute that. Given the corruption Daryl Maguire has now admitted to, do you expect he'll be stripped of his parliamentary pension? Oh, look, uh, that's a matter for the various bodies. There's a committee that looks at those matters and I'll leave it to them. Now, wasn't legislation you yourself introduced in 2017? Absolutely, and I expect uh, everybody to act in accordance with that legislation. When what? you said you weren't surprised at how much the land deal would reap on the phone call, didn't, didn't any part of you say, this, this could end badly? Look, I just ask you to refer to my public evidence, which was in full view over the course of six hours on Monday. Do you still think it's OK for MPs to lobby for land deals while they're in the parliament? Look, I've always said that I am more than happy to consider arrangements that increase the accountability with which MPs are held, and I'm always happy to consider recommendations, whether they're from integrity bodies or from members of parliament, to further put restrictions on the activities of you, MPs. You didn't want to...